Welcome back to Cellar to Cellar. Well, we're, thank uh, you. We're having some uh, Washington State wine, and uh, it's one of my favorite places. Uh, you visited there too, Bob. I yeah. Visited there, and you know, there's so many Chateau Saint Michel is a wonderful winery. As a matter of fact, I have a couple that 15 year old ones that uh, maybe we'll taste later on. You do. Yeah. We're gonna oh, you had that collection. Some, yeah, we're going to have some steaks on the ground. Artist series. Yeah. Artist series. Those okay. are wonderful. And uh, so they produce incredible wines out there. And when you see something from Washington State, you should really give it a shot. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you want to really learn about wine, uh, go on the internet, you know, and explore uh, wines of Washington State. I'm sure there's a wealth of information out there, and there's, uh, there's, it's really fascinating. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful region. We talked about the climate a bit too, Bob, and as well as the soil. Because of the volcanic activity over the years, there's a basalt base. And above that, because of glaciers over the years, there's a nice sandy soil on top. So the roots have a good opportunity to go through the dry, sandy, porous soil to go way down to basalt. Mm -hmm. um, so it gets a lot of character from the actual dirt. Again, vines they, and the roots, they really don't want nutrients for some reason. It's much better for the grapes. They so. don't want nutrients. They're like bougainvillea plants. They, they thrive on a rock. <laughs> you know, yeah, they, they do. They hang on a rock and produce beautiful flowers. Now, out there where they grow these grapes, again, it's in eastern Washington, out in the desert. Pretty much the two crops out there are grapes and hops. Hops for beer. So I like that region, Bob, because I enjoy beer as well, especially in a hot summer day here in Florida. Oh, yeah. Now, this is a perfect time for this sort of stuff. I mean, uh, especially the Rieslings from out there. Uh, you know, these are by-the-pool wines. Uh, but not so mm -hmm. much these reds we're about ready to get into. Let's try I've never had this high at Merlot. Yeah. This glass had some Riesling, so what I usually do, I'll just season my glass. That was your Riesling glass, yeah, yeah. too? Give me a little. Just little season bit. it. Put it a little bit and then swirl it around like that, and that kind of. We'll put it down the hatch. Gets all the taste out of there. Mmm. Get a little taste of what and it's going to be like. If there's any indication of what we're talking about, about dry, desert like conditions, the, the region or the vineyard that this comes from is called Rattlesnake Hills. <laughs> mm. <laughs> sounds, sounds pretty dry and desert like to me. There's a clue right there. Well, I'd hate to be picking these grapes out there. That's all I got to say. Mm. <laughs> got to make a lot of noise and scare the snakes away. I oh, already poured myself. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is this is really a nice Merlot. I'm not, you know, I, I remember for years we poo pooed Merlot as being, you know, oh, Merlot. We we just, you know, there's so many other interesting wines and and we drink a lot of Petite Syrah, Syrah right now. It's mm -hmm. one of my favorite favorite wines. Always and, Infidel, of course. And always Infidels, but gosh, there's some incredible Merlots out there, and I think that they're getting better and better because they're not as overpopularized as they used to be, and mm -hmm. uh, and some of the plants that were getting really popular in the late '80s. Uh, the vineyards that were planted are starting to get some age on them now, and they're really some in very incredible Merlots that are being produced right now. The older the vine, the better the wine. That's right. That, it's a, that's uh, an old saying we just created right now. <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. <laughs> but you know, they often say that uh, that a great vine takes uh, is very similar as a comparison to to a man. Uh, when it's here, we go. A young grapevine. It produces a lot of grapes, and none of the grapes are really all that good. The young young vine does not really imp uh, produce very much intense fruit. The older that vine gets, it produces lesser fruit, but the fruit that hangs on that vine is rich and wonderful. So the an old vine really has all the, if you will, consider it like knowledge. It uh, it just has all the intensity of color and flavor. So uh, that's what's so big about an old vineyard that's like a 100-year-old vineyard, or even a, from a 30 to 50-year-old vineyard, really produces some great wine. And it's fascinating about Washington State. We talked about phylloxera in the past. Phylloxera is a little bug that eats up the roots of, of, of grapes. Um, in Washington State, they grow a lot of their grapevines on their natural rootstock. They didn't go and graft on because it's a desert condition, it's dry, and it's very windy out there, and it's cold in the wintertime, so the bug doesn't like it. So a lot of the vines here are natural rootstock. So if they freeze down even in the wintertime and kills the vine, that's okay. Next year we'll have a crop because it'll that's grow right. back from the root. So. That's right. So, Bob, I like this Merlot a lot. I, I, I personally, I would have preferred the Norton. I, sorry, sorry, Hyatt, but I really like the St. James Norton from Missouri. Well, a little you better, know what? but you got a point there, Bob, and I'm surprised because <laughs> Washington produces wonderful wine. Wine. This is a real shocker because if I was, if somebody was asked me what state would produce uh, the better, and of course this is just uh, random between these two bottles, not very scientific, but not at all. It's amazing that uh, what a wonderful quality of wine that Norton is, and uh, you know, I really have to hand it to you, Bob. You've come through again and 
and taught me some more viticulture. Oh, I'm so humbled by you, Bob All right. Ross. All right. <laughs> Well, Shall we get out of here? We should get and get have out some of here uh, and, uh, butt steak on the grill and red wine. Steak on the grill and red wine. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for joining us on another exciting episode of Cellar to Cellar. <laughs> <laughs>